On the 17th day of October, Halloween gave to me 17 morticians regaling, 16 Vincents cracking, 15 Lees counting, 14 brides abiding, 13 Carfax Abbeys, 12 fathers stripping, 11 au pairs drowning, 10 children creeping, 9 Roddy seizing, 8 snowy mazes, 7 bacons digging, 6 doorways bending, 5 children yowling, 4 zombie bulls, 3 haunted mirrors, 2 monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Hey there, everybody. Happy October 17th. That's right. It is Saturday. We have exactly two weeks until Halloween, which is very exciting and also a little disheartening, right? Uh, it's going too quickly. My favorite time of year, and there's only two weeks of it left. But, but everybody, uh, we are starting the weekend off right with what I like to call a banger. Um, so... We've been doing some movies I like in this 31 Days of Halloween here at Legion Podcasts, and we've also done some movies that are relatively new or I feel like I've somehow missed. Uh, Stir of Echoes was one of those where, you know, I just hadn't seen it and and needed to catch up uh, and and make myself more familiar with it. But uh, in this case, it's one of the new ones, and uh, we're talking about the Mortuary Collection, which just dropped on Shudder. It's a movie I've uh, I've heard a lot about. It's been getting a lot of buzz ever since it uh, hit the festivals. And I will say that uh, here's an early uh, quick review of it. Because I'm going to get into some light spoilers, but nothing crazy here. But if you just don't want to know anything about the movie, I will say you should watch it. It is a really, really good anthology. Um, so I, it's not a great anthology. It's a really, really, really good anthology. Um, it's got some really fun stories, and with that out of the way, if uh, if you are content with that review, turn it off now, go watch the Mortuary Collection. Uh, if not, let's get into it, and let's talk about what, what is cool about this movie. Um, first of all, I think horror anthologies, which have been having a bit of a resurgence, um, have been of questionable quality, right? I didn't really care for Monsterland. It was a that movie, I saw it on Hulu, and there was now a series on Hulu called Monster Land, and I haven't done the research to figure out if those two things are related. But, I don't, maybe not, because the other movie, Monster Land, doesn't matter. We'll talk about that movie another time. Uh, <laughs> so, like, ever since Trick or Treat, people have been kind of chasing, hey, you know, the horror anthology is kind of back. And, uh, they're, you know, the ABCs of horror, and uh, a double X, uh, the, you know... Any good reason to do a horror anthology, then do it. Uh, what was uh, Scare, not Scare Me, it was another Shutter release recently, Scare Package, uh, that, you know, people seem to really like, although Duncan and I agreed that we weren't really crazy about it. Um, but what makes the Mortuary Collection successful, where a lot of these other recent examples have failed, is I think it benefits from having a single writer and director who is writer and director Ryan Spindell. Um, And he uh, did a bunch of shorts, one of them called The Babysitter Murders, which is uh, part of this collection. So I'm wondering if maybe he didn't repurpose some of the shorts into this, which is fine by me. I'm not not complaining at all about that. But I, I think the movie benefits from it being a single vision of what this movie ought to be. Um, another thing that I think works to this film's benefit is the fact that you have Clancy Brown as your sort of storyteller, you know, your creep, uh, your crypt keeper, if you will. And he plays a character named Montgomery Dark, who has, uh, an Angus Scrim like height and appearance. Although Clancy Brown is always just going to be a bigger, beefier dude than Angus Scrim. And he's got this upper row of teeth that are all these little yellow teeth and it looks like there's about 300 of them oh my god it's a great character design he's real pallid of course and his face looks kind of gross and veiny and it's just enough like he looks sick enough that he looks scary a little bit but also uh he he serves as a good you know sort of a not protagonist, but a good central character to kind of hang the movie on. 
And the whole premise is he owns this mortuary. It is filled with books. A, a young woman comes to apply for a job at this mortuary. And he is kind of giving her an interview and showing her the ropes as he tells her stories from this extensive library in the mortuary, uh, the titular uh, uh, mortuary collection. And in each of these books is the way someone died. And Clancy Brown as Montgomery Dark points out, you know, it's not the how, it's the why. Uh, so we get a series of stories uh, from Clancy Brown. Um, and I'm going to briefly take it story by story here. Because there's only four of them. And I I will say the first one is good. It's fun. But the, one of the things that's interesting about the Mortuary Collection is because these are stories being told, the secondary character in this, uh, some, Sam is her name, played by Caitlin Custer, uh, who is having this interview. Like, she'll hear a story and then comment on it. And she, you'll hear the first story and be like, you know, uh, it was fine. But I was expecting an ironic twist or something. And uh, and Montgomery Dark will be like, no, well, let's try this one on for size. And uh, so the first story is good. It's fun. And it's quick. That's another thing to its benefit. So by the time you get kind of deep into the first 10, 15 minutes of the movie, like by the 20 minute mark, you're kind of done with the first story. And on to the next. And so I like that. I like, okay, we got one story out of the way real fast. Then we go into a second story, which is a little more predictable. Uh, about a, uh, a young man in a fraternity who has unprotected sex with a woman who uh, is very adamant about the fact that he wear a condom. And then, of course, you know, one thing leads to another and... and Weird shit happens as a result of this sexual encounter. Um, this is a good example of one of the things I, I think is really fun about the Mortuary Collection is that it's got a really grim and and darkly comic sense of humor. And there's a lot of stuff that happens, especially in this second story, that I was just like, oh my god. There's, dude, th there is a scene to rival um, a Clockwork Orange's sex scene. Where they speak, you know, the Kubrick uh, had a scene of Alex uh, DeLong, uh, or is it DeLarge? Yeah. Um, going uh, to town with a couple of young women to the tune of the William Tell Overture. It's not quite that extreme. It's not, you know, an NC-17 rated film. But it does this great progression where you kind of cut briefly to moments of uh, a clock in the foreground letting you know that these two have been having sex for a while. And then in the background, you see what's happening. And one of the bigger laughs of the movie is one of those cuts is in the midst of sex. These two people are just smacking the shit out of each other. And it's really, really funny. Um, so there's that kind of sense of humor to the whole thing. And uh, and the second story is kind of good, not great. And that's also the story in the third tale, which is the story of a man who is um, taking care of a wife who is a convalescent. She is a, kind of a vegetable. And there's a point where the doctor is like, hey, you don't have to live like this. If I leave you these pills and you give them to her, she's just never going to wake up. And so <laughs> the short is about that decision and also the consequences of it. And it gets really uh, extreme and kind of, kind of, again, grimly funny. And it's got some good, uh, like uh, some really interesting effects work uh, is how I'll put it. So that I don't give anything away, but there's some really interesting uh, practical effects work throughout all of this. There's plenty of digital too, but it's mostly used uh, well, and um, for for the stuff that hey we just couldn't you know there's some tentacles and stuff at one point that are clearly digital, but it's also like I I also don't know how you would have done that practically, uh, so I kind of give it a little bit of a pass. Um, I because I think the movie uh, tries to employ practical effects where it can. 
which seems to be a new trend and it's something I like. I, I, I think that there is a resurgence, at least in independent horror, for practical effects over digital. Um, I think a lot of independent filmmakers are, are kind of wrapping their heads around the fact that a lot of times digital looks like shit and, and will continue. It will age their movies poorly. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that this story is pretty good. And, and I think maybe the biggest problem I have with the Mortuary Collection is that these middle two stories are the weakest of the four, but they're both still pretty good. Like, that's the the positive news about the Mortuary Collection, is that in a movie that has uh, a, of an anthology structure, mo- you know, you live and die by the quality of those stories. And usually in... In most collections, it's like, ah, a couple are okay, and then there's a couple of shitty ones. In this case, it's like, oh, there's a couple that are great, and then there's some that are, you know, okay to good. And I would call this one good over okay, uh, because it, it does tackle some interesting themes. It does get surprisingly violent, and in a way that's fun. And speaking of surprisingly violent, let's move on to our final story, which is, uh, it, you know, kind of wraps up um, the, the it kind of wraps up the, the overarching story between Sam and uh, Mr. Montgomery Dark as they're holding this interview. And I, again, I will say no more about that other than to say I really like how all of that resolves itself uh, in a very fun way. And uh, the last uh, segment is called The Babysitter Murders, The Last Story. And it is a incredibly and gleefully violent fight scene that takes place between a babysitter and the person trying to kill the babysitter. And again, it's one of those things where, like, every time I think that it's starting to sag a little bit, something super hilarious or violent will happen. And I, uh, and I'm back on board. Like there were a couple of times where as I was watching the movie, I just cackled laughing and clapped my chubby fingers together. It was just like, ha ha, that was rad. So any movie that can kind of inspire those moments of like pure cinematic joy where it's just fun and wonderful. And you're happy to be watching this movie because it is doing things and making moves that you never expected it was going to do. So um, the mortuary collection for me, if like, I, you know, I'm not usually one to give out like star grades or gr- letter grades or anything like that. Um, but I, let me say this because, uh, I, I feel like I want to give it it's, it's due, but also to say like, I don't think this is a modern classic. Maybe, I don't know. I need to go back and watch it again, but it's really, really good. Like if I, if pressed, I would say it's like a B plus a minus kind of movie. But that might skew higher uh, or lower on subsequent watches. I will say I had a blast with it, and I can't recommend you including this in your 31 Days of Halloween enough. It belongs there. And I will further say about the uh, Shutter service that uh, they have continued to bring really, really good, interesting movies to the platform. If you're not paying the five bucks a month for Shutter and you're a really big horror fan like myself, uh, I think you're doing yourself a disservice because even the movies that I'm not uh, personally crazy about, um, I really like that they're there. You know, like I wasn't crazy about, uh, was it Blood Quantum or something? Uh, I wasn't really crazy about that movie the way that a lot of people were, but I was glad it was there. And they've done such a, I mean, whether it's Tigers Are Not Afraid or One Cut of the Dead or The Mortuary Collection, you know, they've just been doing the Lord's work in getting horror movie fans good horror movies uh, or diverse horror movies. You know, even even kind of showcasing that recent film from uh, Jay Baruchel. Again, I didn't think it was a, a perfect film. I thought it was okay. Uh, I thought it had some flaws, but... You know, I like the fact that there's a streaming channel that's like, you know what, this is kind of weird and interesting. There's some ideas here, uh, and we want to give a platform to that kind of horror. So, I'm a big fan, and if you keep bringing me Mortuary Collections and a couple of other movies a year, like, at the end of the day, I'm like, this is about a $70 uh, subscription for the year, in the in the ballpark of that. 
Which means if I'm getting three or four good movies out of it a year, I'm calling that a win. You know, and plus going back and watching some old shit that I really like. So uh, I think they do an incredible job of curation. And I think uh, the Mortuary Collection is a great addition to uh, to their own collection of films. So um, that's it. Uh, you should absolutely, absolutely, you should absolutely watch the Mortuary Collection. <laughs> that's some early morning Sean Connery for me, and it's not very good. Uh, so anyway, folks, uh, look. I'm about to get out of here. Have yourselves a great Saturday. Have a spooky Saturday. Thanks for listening to this 31 Days of Halloween. We've only got two weeks left. Savor it. Bite into the season with both teeth and don't let go. Uh, and and we will be back tomorrow to talk about the 18th movie on our 31 Days of Halloween. Uh, thanks for being with me on this journey. And uh, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye, everybody. <laughs>